Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Namaste. Namaste. Atma Namaste, everyone. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. You're poking. Oh, I'm so sorry. Diagonal. I'm sorry. Atma sorry. Namaste to me. Atma Namaste. Yeah. Hold on. I'll just take it. At so ready for the next show? The eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Atma Namaste, Abhijay. Uh, Atma Atma Namaste, Doctor Sagar. Yes. Okay. So let's go live and then we we'll start up with our prayers. This time I'm not going to try and do two chapters in one day. <laughs> Just do one chapter. All right. So um, yes. Uh, let's close our eyes. After the prayer, I'll mute everyone. Shall I mute now? No. I'll just mute everyone. Okay. Let's close our eyes. Connect down to the palate. Inhale and exhale. Feel yourself in the presence of the teacher and God. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokok, Sri to Lord Maha Guruji Mehri. To all the great ones, to all the beings of knowledge, light and power, especially to the great teachers and the masters of theosophy, to our soul and divine self, to all the great beings, we humbly ask for your great, great blessings today. To all the beings of communication, of our respective Wi-Fi's, we ask you to help us all through the session to be able to receive your knowledge, your wisdom on a deeper and a clearer, le clearer level, to be able to assimilate this knowledge and use this knowledge to become better instruments in your service. We thank you for this priceless opportunity and for these priceless teachings. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. We thank you with gratitude, with deep respect and love. Atma Namaste, everyone. <coughs> Welcome to Chapter 9. We've actually moved to Chapter 9. So this chapter, when we look at the center they're referring to a, in this particular section, it's very similar to what we already know uh, with reference to Master Cho's book. Yes, uh, they call it the sixth uh, center, right, in accordance to the seven chakra system. So it's the sixth one between your eyebrows. It has 96 spokes. Now, in some of the Indian texts, they say that it, it's actually just two, right? It looks like it's just two halves. Uh, so they say that's probably got to do with the color of these two halves, right? So these two sections, one section is primarily, they say, rose color with a lot of yellow in it. And the other, they say, is a purplish blue. And uh, if you look at Master Choi's book, you'll find that half of it is yellow and the other half is violet. And there are also references in Master Choi's book where it is green and violet as well. Yes. So these are the two colors of the Agnya Chakra and the spokes are 96. So that's what we also look at, the 96 spokes divided into two. And so um, they go on to mention that... Um, they are not too sure exactly where these colors come from, right? And so they say that when they look at the book Inner Life, uh, keeping in mind uh, the colors that come, uh, basically the purple, the purplish blue that appears in part of this uh, Agne Chakra, it takes care of all the organs under that, right? And so they say probably this has got to do with the colors from the throat. Remember, there is that dark blue and the violet that goes to the brain. So they say maybe that is one of the thing, one of the uh, colors through which uh, it actually passes through the Agnya as well. But they don't have complete understanding of this. However, you and I know that the Agnya Chakra, with reference to what we talk about, the psychological function, is got to do with the will center and also the directing center and also with the abstract mind connected to the throat, which is the concrete mind. And... Um, these two are interrelated. So if they are interrelated, there's obviously going to be a channel, I think, which is open uh, for energy to move from the throat to the Agni Chakra. And so through that, yes, possibly the colors which come to the throat go there. So uh, moving on, they say that uh, it, 
these are the two colors that we will look at. Now, when we look at the function of uh, the Agnya Chakra, it, it is the center that for us is very, very important with reference to our entire physical body, uh, the functioning of many of the systems in our body. If the Agnya Chakra is not strong enough, then it's, it's almost like uh, the, the whole business starts to get affected. So the main person of the business is, for, for example, the proprietor. So similarly, with reference to our chakral uh, system, the Agni Chakra is key to the functioning of all our various systems. And so we notice, uh, even when we start to do a lot of healing, the Agni Chakra is one of those chakras that is primarily worked on, in most cases, in advanced pranic healing, right? Uh, so if you look at the actual area, it, it's more the eyes, the nose to an extent. And then, of course, we have the pituitary gland, which controls the endocrine system, uh, which is the master gland. Yes, uh, which be, because of which also this chakra has. Uh, yes, I did press live. I'm wondering why we didn't go live. Hold on. No, I, I did that. No, I did it. See, it's not coming today again. Can you just talk to Vijay and tell him it's not coming? Sorry, uh, yesterday I had this problem with Twin Hearts. Today I'm having it with uh, this session. I'm not too sure why. All right. Uh, so uh, to mention uh, the master gland, which is a pituitary gland, also another reason this chakra is called the master chakra, a very important chakra for us, right? And this has to do with also what uh, Amit mentioned last time, the higher aspects. So the higher nature is this part and this is the lower nature. So for the higher nature to control the lower nature, this is the higher will and the solar plexus is the lower will, right? And so until and unless we are able to, sorry, until and unless we are able to have control over this, the solar plexus, it becomes difficult because sometimes we go rampant with our emotions. This one, must turn on. Continue talking. You're no, you, you let it load completely. Okay, fine. You're and so what happens is when we look at the solar plexus, if we are stuck in the eye center, and when I say we're stuck in the eye center, we're stuck in the emotional aspect of being angry and irritable and wanting things only for ourselves or, or, or only wanting our way. So when it's only I, 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 then the Agni Chakra in such people, it's not really very helpful. Yes. For, for that particular body. And so, Master Chua, I remember there was this one time uh, I got upset um, and uh, he, he, I presume, knew I was upset. So he called on me and then I had to come and sit. It was a table and there were chairs. I was sitting there and he's like, okay, so me, start doing. So he made me do certain breathing techniques. And then he took my thumb, he held my thumb and pressed it against the Agnya Chakra. <laughs> so when you press it, you actually activate, right? You make this chakra much bigger and so that is very crucial for the body yes the uh, energy and emotional bodies to have a uh, greater balance and so there has to be a balance between the agni chakra and the solar plexus it's not that we want the solar plexus to be inhibited completely definitely not making it too small we want the agni chakra to continue to be there but in in a position where it has control over all the departments under it Yes, and the solar plexus being one of those. And so for me, the functioning of the Agnya Chakra, um, not just physically, but psychologically, is, is very important. Uh, because I think in today's life, uh, the emotions go a little rampant in, in many cases. and We don't know what to do. And one of the ways to bring us back, uh, to align ourselves, is to have, this has got to do with also the mental body. Uh, the emotion is the heart and the solar plexus. So for the mental body to have control over the uh, emotional body, one of the ways is to try and literally turn on the switch. At least for me, I felt that was it. So I just press it. <laughs> and then he continued to make me do the breathing, uh, which helped me actually emotionally stabilize. Yes. Even if you don't know what I'm talking about, just if you've done breathing in pranayama or you've done basic pranic healing, just deep breathing alone, the rhythm of that breathing helps you emotionally become more calm and stable. So you don't want the rose colors that you want to Sorry, what's happening? He said all things. So what did he say? For his day about No no I'm talking about Vijay. Did he tell you? He's not reporting. Okay. Continue, I'll just check. It's not loaded. So. 
you're done. Uh, just that part, no? The, then we go to the astral correspondence. Sorry, I'll just take a break. I'll here. take time. <clears throat> right. Okay, so let's look at the center between the eyebrows. Uh, the sixth center that uh, is between the eyebrow has about 96 spokes, right? Okay, that's, okay, whatever. Uh, in uh, Indian books, however, it is mentioned as having only two pieces. Okay, that's fine. Of these, one grade is predominantly rose colored, though with a great deal of yellow in it, and the other predominantly a kind of purplish uh, blue. Um, now, if you remember the uh, advanced pranic killing book, um, yeah, any other ways for the mental body to have, okay, I'll come to it. Uh, if you remember the advanced pranic killing book, the Ajna Chakra, actually I do have it here. The Ajna Chakra is, um, first of all, it doesn't uh, say which is a very vital part of the etheric anatomy, that the Ajna uh, sort of energizes the whole body, all right, in a rapid sequence, all right, whereas the crown and the forehead has a more funneling effect. Um, the, again, funneling is spiral, <laughs> okay? When you energize the Ajna, when the Ajna pulls in energy, there is corresponding uh, energy uh, activated, you know, or, you know, what does it say? Other chakras light up. That means energy goes into those other chakras. All right. So you can basically uh, energize all the chakras through the Ajna chakra. But the question is, how come in the etheric diagram they don't show the Ajna connected to all the other chakras? All right. So is it connected only on an etheric level or is it a different type of connection? We have to look at that. Let's see what he talks about in future chapters. I don't know whether he reveals anything about it. Uh, but what is very important to note is the predominant colors uh, of the Ajna Chakra differ from person to person uh, based on the psychological state of that person. And this is, I think, very, very important because um, it's interesting, although, and there was a question, how does the, you know, how do you control the, you know, the thought, you know, your emotions using your mental body. But it's so funny that um, although this is connected with higher mental faculty, higher thinking, abstract thinking. So the Ajna Chakra, its, um, it's uh, psychological function is abstract mind. So basically, people who are good in mathematics, if you want to do mathematics, science, you know, abstract subjects, um, calculus you need to have the Agnya strong. Uh, that is why those subjects are not introduced in, uh, you know, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, when the throat is developing more in, in a person, in a, in, a, in a child, usually in high school. And some, some of them, some of the high schoolers, their Agnya is not developing as fast as the rest, which is nothing wrong with it. Everyone develops at a certain pace. So they find mathematics, uh, science, those kind of abstract subjects, very, very difficult. So all you have to do is just make it strong, clean and energize it, right? It should help. Um, now, what I find interesting is that a chakra or that is connected to higher mental activity and higher thinking is affected by a psychological state of a person, okay? Whereas we're looking at being, uh, the Agni chakra will control the emotion. Here it looks like the emotions have a control on the Ajna as well. So it works both ways. All right. It's just something to note. We, we can't, because it's an open session, I can't tell you everything, but you need to take it from there and think about it. Okay. All right. So, because the Ajna is in charge of the higher mental faculty, that is true, but it does get affected. Even the color changes of the Ajna. And if the color changes, obviously the energy, the color is basically energy. The energetic uh, component or the energetic ingredients of the Ajna changes as a person changes in psychological state. So if a person is extremely highly developed Agnya, very mental, how would his Agnya look compared to a person who is extremely emotional and um, not very good at um, you know, thinking clearly? How would their Agnya chakras differ in color and texture and everything, all right? So it works both ways. So when you are very emotional, it will affect the Agnya as well, okay? What else? All right, one second, we'll just close this. Okay, so now it goes into the next part. The writer has been unable to find any specific description and so on and so on. Um, 
that the purplish blue appearance of one half of the center agrees closely with the colors of special types of vitality that vivify it. All right. The, the, although it is mentioned that in one half of the center agrees closely with the colors of the special types of vitality that activate or vivify it. All right. This would seem to indicate, okay, all this, which pass. Now it would seem to, but I don't, I personally don't think so. Why is he not able to find the source? From my point of view, when I think about it, it's because they have not considered the energy channel from the crown. Okay. Now you're looking at only one source instead of four sources. You have one, you have two, you have three, and you have the basic and source. So obviously the, the, you can't get all the, results with just that just like how uh, healing is not easy or almost impossible using only the seven chakra system it's good for yoga it might be good for spirituality but it's not enough for healing so when you're looking at the ajna chakra you have to consider the fact that the, the, there's an additional source of divine en of energy into the body which is from the crown not only from the crown from the crown from the forehead and from the agnya the agnya itself can be a source of energy into the body Okay, it can be, but it's not recommended. All right, it's not recommended. How do we know it can be? Because uh, if you look at the book, it says so. Let's see. So it is not advisable to use the Agnya as a source chakra. So what does that mean? That means you can use it as a source chakra. Why? Because the use of the Agnya hand chakra will use destructive effects on the patient. Number one, because it's very, very willful energy. All right. How do we know that Agnya comes in? The Agnya ensures, okay, this is, okay, this is not what I want to talk about. Okay. The crown, forehead or Agnya chakra can also be used as entry for electric violet light. Okay, so the reason that they cannot detect it is because it must be welling up from a fourth dimension, which they cannot comprehend at that time. Okay, it must be welling up from, from, from higher planes. All right, coming back from higher planes. Anyway, it's good information. Um, now, we're going to reach the development of the astral center. Okay, we'll just go into it. Now, the Ajna Chakra physically is actually very, very important. Okay, I just want to talk about it. Uh, number one, it ensures that uh, the other chakras work harmoniously with, with all, of, all, all, all of them. All right, so we're going to go quickly into this whole part. Um, okay, so it talks about the Ajna. The development of the corresponding astral center confers the power to perceive definitely the nature and shape of astral objects instead of vaguely sensing the presence. Vaguely sensing the presence is basically the navel, I think, and uh, the nature and shape of astral objects, okay? Uh, and the awakening of the center causes a man to begin to see objects and have various sorts of waking visions of places or people. When just beginning to awaken, landscape and clouds of color are given blah, 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 blah. And this is, the, uh, this is uh, the, uh, clairvoyance, and it talks about etheric sight, okay? Um, this is true on a certain level, depending on what you're looking at it. Okay, uh, you have to listen very carefully. Otherwise, uh, when I'll come to, I'll come back to this. But when you're looking at clairvoyance, it is not this chakra that is the most important. It is the forehead chakra or the chokma in Kabbalah. Uh, it gives you the ability to see. If you use the Agni chakra to see cl uh, clairvoyantly, you can only see very very low frequency, like dirty energy, elementals, those kind of things you'll be very restricted in your vision. So you need other centers uh, to see uh, uh, clairvoyantly, okay? Now, why did they say the Ajna is good in perceiving things and it gives you the nature and it gives you the shape of the astral object and not only astral, even etheric. We will come back to it, okay? I just want to review the, the Ajna because this chapter is a little bit a uh, hodgepodge. So I just wanted to review. Number one, physically, what is the uh, purpose of the Agnya? Number one, it harmonizes all the uh, chakras through the endocrine glands because the Agnya is in charge of the pituitary gland and the Ajna through the endocrine gland controls all the other chakras. So if you have a reproductive issue, you have to treat the Agnya because of the gonads and the reproductive organs. And uh, if you have a thyroid issue, you have to treat the Agnya chakra. If you have a pancreas issue, you have to treat the Agnya chakra. So whenever the Agnya chakra is not working properly, the endocrine glands can't function properly. 
Okay. Uh, number two, one of the main energy centers in charge of the eyes, nose, and uh, ears. So it's not ENT, it's ENE. Okay. So, in so anything to do with the eyes, the nose, the ears, the Agni Chakra is malfunctioning or the Agni Chakra has an issue. All right. That's physically. Number three, it determines the healthiness of the basic chakra and the sex chakra. All right. We have already covered this in the previous chapter when you're looking, I think, in the base of the spine. I, I think so. Uh, but it, uh, the, for the basic function, basic chakra to function normally, the Agnya should be healthy. If the Agnya is not healthy, even if the person is doing proper walking, exercise, everything, the basic will start to malfunction. Okay. You cannot have a healthy basic chakra if the Agnya is not healthy. Okay. Um, Now, the next one is, along with the forehead, um, it facilitates the flow of divine energy into the body, all right? Now, this is a very important aspect because this is what allows you to maintain control over your emotion. It is divine energy and soul control that uh, uh, allows you to uh, maintain, um, regulate your emotions. We'll come back to that as well, all right? Is there anything else? No, uh, okay, we'll come back to that. Um, the agnya is very important for infections because it produces a lot of, although it has bluish via purple and it has rose and yellow or whatever, it's, it's, it can produce a lot of green, a lot of blue and a lot of violet. Bluish violet, we already know, but also a lot of green is produced. And that is very important when you have infections, especially upper res respiratory infections or those kind of infections. All right. And, um, Okay, then we'll go, when we go to the emotional aspect, I'll talk about the Agnya because that is more important than physical right now. Okay, you can continue with me. Okay. Astro. <laughs> I finished that, but I haven't spoken about it more in detail. I read it. All right. Okay, so um, when you look at the, the next part where we're talking about the corresponding astral center, uh, this is got to do basically with what they talk about in the next paragraph, clairvoyance, right? The ability to be able to see inside or within the astral world and objects uh, and, and the nature in which that actually functions. However, uh, they also mention that for this faculty to, to kind of be completely awakened, it, it also goes through its own process. So initially, uh, they say that it is not, uh, whatever you see is not very clear. It's very vague. Uh, for me, uh, it's more like, uh, you know, when you, when you have a black and white uh, picture going and it's not even clear, it's blurred. So if you remember the old days when we had those televisions, <laughs> you know, the focus is not there. So you can make out it's some like, like a hill or a, it's a tree or a house, but you can't really see it clearly. And it's more in black and white. There's no new no colors, no shades. And so that's the form of clairvoyance initially for a lot of people. However, before that, they do mention that you also have clairvoyance, which is with reference to the sense that, you know, the energy there is good or the energy there is not good uh, or something is happening to this person or with your patients, you're aware that, you know, something's happening to an organ. Now that's a sense. You can't see it, but you can just sense it. So they actually say that, um, when you look at it, the development of the corresponding astral center confers the power to perceive uh, definitely the nature and shape of astral objects vaguely first, yeah, instead of, uh, and then after that, you, you also have sometimes what they call uh, the vague sense of the presence of certain things. Yes, yeah, so it starts off with sometimes a vague presence, then you see it very vaguely or very, it's, it's more blur. And then later on, when it's fully developed, it is then referred to as clairvoyance, yes, proper clairvoyance. And so uh, that was with reference to astral. Now, etheric also, they mentioned something very similar where they say the awakening of this etheric center causes man to start seeing objects. So um, it's almost like in your waking consciousness, you actually have visions of seeing people or seeing things. And this is something uh, I remember uh, Master Hector would mention. Before he came to India, he actually saw many of our faces, even before he met us. And he was wondering who these people were because you know their, their faces were so different from uh, the locals back there in the Philippines. 
And when he started to travel and meet us, he realized, oh my God, these are the faces that I've been seeing, you know, much earlier. So that's another level of clairvoyance with reference to the etric uh, chakra, not the astral. And so uh, it goes on to say that the man might see objects and to have various sorts of waking visions of places and or people. So he would also see these places uh, which look very different from, again, the Philippines. And so when he came to Kerala and when he went to other cities, he says, now I recognize what I saw. So to start off in the beginning, uh, landscapes and clouds of colors are half perceived. That's what I would call blurry, uh, according to my experience. And then when it's fully developed, it would be proper clairvoyance. Yes, the ability to see through. Now, you've got to remember, when you come to pranic healing, there's something else that we talk about within the chakra that is required. It's like the doorway. So until and un unless that door is open, you can't see through. And this door, based on your clairvoyance, uh, you can use different um, doors. But the door that they're talking about here is with reference to the Agni chakra. And you open the door to see what you have to see, and then you close it. So for example, if you're a healer, then you open this door to see maybe the energy system of your patient uh, and figure out where you feel the blocks are, where you feel the problem is. And then after that, uh, to be aware that maybe this is an area you need to focus on during your healing to make your patient better. And then once you finish with what you wanted to see, you can close it. So through will, you can close this. Problem is when you look at people who are hallucinating, uh, last time we were talking about auditory hallucination. So when you talk about visual hallucination, it's almost like these doors are open permanently. And uh, depending on how they are emotionally or even mentally, the kind of emotions that they have of fear, of anger, of uh, you know, being violent, because the vibration of their system, their entire etheric system is of a grosser level, when they open the door, they can only see that same level. And so when they open the door, they see uh, in, within the astral world beings of that same nature, which obviously are grosser and lower as well, not that evolved. And so you will see mischievous ones or also irritable ones and, and uh, crazy looking ones. But if you are more spiritually um, evolved or you're someone with a big heart or you're someone who's uh, religious in, in the sense that your alignment with God is more, which means you've got more of that subtle energy coming through you. Then when you open the door, what you see is of higher quality because the quality of your energy, it's almost like like, attra like attracts like. And so you kind of then perceive within the astral level only that which is more subtle, uh, more beautiful, both with reference to what you see, the colors that you see, more vibrant, more beautiful compared to what you might see in the lower uh, rung. Now, this is also in reference to the different chakras. So the high chakras, what you see is different compared to the lower chakras. You can see with some of the lower chakras as well. So we need to be aware of that. However, they say they, they're going to talk more about this uh, in the chapter, in the later chapter called Etheric Sight. Uh, just one thing, the, the ability to be able to see, they say the vision, the magnification of vision or, it, or its uh, converse is associated with the center. So with the awakening of the center, you may be able to see more or less. Yeah. So I'll, uh, and the, uh, the name in Sanskrit is called the Agnya Chakra. Um, to make it simple in English, we say Ajna. So the name is Agnya Chakra. All yours. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so, so can we inhibit someone's foyer or Ajna who's suffering from schizophrenia and they become better? Actually, what Sumi was talking about, it's uh, since it's an open session, we can't tell you completely. Those those people see not through only their Ajna, they see through their solar plexus. For those of you who've done psychotherapy, so. Um, now you, we know, all right. So I'm gonna put. Um, thought out there. We teach in clairvoyance, actually, there's a course called Higher Clairvoyance. And one of the most difficult reasons why people can't see energy very easily is because they're too willful. You see, seeing energy, feeling, sensing, it has to do with sensitivity of the heart. You cannot use will to see. So the, a, a big portion of the clairvoyance and developing clairvoyance includes uh, trying to uh, reduce or minimize the size of the Agni Chakra. 
okay? So what the author here is saying is a bit contradictory from what we are learning and have practiced and used. Uh, where, like I said, that's why I put up the quote, you, you don't need the Agnya, but you need the forehead to actually see energy in that form of clairvoyance. So what are they talking about here? And how does the Agnya have to do with seeing? And if you remember the previous chapter, how does the throat have to do with hearing? Okay, so we're going to look into that. But before I, uh, okay, we'll just let me look into it. So physically we have covered uh, these, these aspects, okay? These are the most important aspects physically. And uh, emotionally and mentally, the Agni is the center for higher and abstract mind. It is also the center for the will of or directive functioning, okay? Let me just see what's the next one. Um, all right, here, okay. Okay, sorry. The center for will and directive function. All right, Sumi's already spoken about the higher will and the directive functioning. Okay, um, but you have to understand that. Um, I got too many thoughts in my mind. Okay, there are two types of intelligence, okay? When you're talking about higher will, higher directing center, we'll combine it with the spiritual. But what we mean by the higher will or higher directing center is that, you already explained this part, right? I don't know, I went out, so I don't know what you're talking about. Did you explain this part? The higher abstract mind? Yes, I did mention yeah. about And I've already explained about the mathematics, so we'll just skip that, otherwise we won't have time. Um, but more importantly, psychologically, the Agnya uh, is in charge of, abstract thinking or what we call strategic planning. So if you want to be a CEO, if you want to be, um, um, you know, a person who is a director directing people, you need a big and functional Agnya Chakra. Okay. You don't want a person with a big throat chakra who's going to look at every nitty gritty detail. You want a person who's going to look at the needs of the people. All right. So uh, for example, you see, there are two types of intelligence. The first intelligence is accurate perception, the being able to see, but it's not creative. All right, it's not creative. From seeing, you must manifest creative in the uh, creativeness in the form of correct expression. So there are people, all right, who who have the agnya, but they don't have the functional aspect of the agnya or the what we call the basic chakra. All right, um, so when you combine the Agni and the basic or the ability to move and dynamic activity, you have people who see things and get things done also. All right. Otherwise, have you noticed you'll meet a lot of intelligent people. They're good here. They're good here. Uh, they're good like in the Agni, they're good in the throat. They see things, they know how to look at details. Uh, but that's that. They don't do anything. All right. Um, they cannot produce results. They just keep talking about it. Right. They're good for dinner to go for dinner. They're good for chit chat and talking about, staff, eco economy, and these kind of things, but nothing really gets done, all right? Um, these are people I'm sure you've met who are intelligent, but not active, all right? Not creative. So this corresponds also to executives, all right? People who give instructions to other people. People with a developed Agnya, they might not necessarily do it, but they make sure that other people do it, all right? Um, so you need a good Agnya to be a good director, good executive, to manifest basically actions and results. All right, they, they direct, they say, do this, do this, do that. And then they sit down, <laughs> all right? But of course, they follow up and they pressure. Do it or else, <laughs> all right? Um, so if you do it, we'll have vacation. If you do this, we will have bonus. If you don't, out, <laughs> all right? So, um, so this, is, this is the whole idea between Agnya uh, Chakra, all right? Now, how does a throat chakra, I'm going to compare the Agnya and the throat now. And a person who looks at throat are really good at looking at details. They're very good at following SOPs. They're very good at um, operational, matters. operational matters. But any small problems, they can't do it. They, they just can't do it. They're good in preserving, but not creating. They're good in solving small matters, but not big problems. Why? Because it's only their throat that develop. In order to create something new, in order to overcome big problem, you need the Ajna. It's connected to strategic planning. So if you look at, for example, many of the founders like Microsoft or uh, if you look at Apple uh, and many other big companies, they grow by acquiring other ac a company, uh, companies 
which are which they believe is in line with what the future requires or what the people need okay so if you look at uh, steve jobs he didn't invent the computer his partner did they didn't buy the mouse uh, they bought the mouse i think from xerox the executive in xerox must have been wondering who needs a mouse what is this mouse uh, apple bought it from them for almost nothing and if you see their uh, their their phones i remember when the iphone came out it was really good and then suddenly the iPhone, I remember four, was it four or 4S? Anyway, four was good, then 4S came out. I think the only difference in that, it was just a small upgrade with the chip, everything. But the main thing that changed was they got this uh, fantastic assistant called Siri. And people went nuts over it, Siri, can you do this? Siri, what is my name? Siri this, Siri that. And then if you look into the history, they actually acquired a company who developed Siri, based on what I read. And then if you look at the iPhone 5, the iPhone 5 came out, and then 5S. People saying, nah, why should I buy the 5S? It'll just be a small jump. But then it had this uh, fingerprint, you know? So with the fingerprint, you unlock your phone. Wow, that was amazing, all right? Uh, and then if you look at it, they acquired a company that, uh, that got, uh, uh, was a fingerprint company. So if you look at many of the companies, like uh, the Tatas, they bought Range Rover for when Range Rover was in debt and had nothing. But now I think Range Rover was one of the, at least when I checked last year, it was one of the um, cash cows for them. And I think there, were, there are many, many examples. If you look at this, you will see the Ajna in motion. You'll see the Ajna in action. This is the directing center, understanding the needs of the people. That's why if you know scanning, it becomes very practical because if you're hiring someone to be a CEO of your company, to be a director, they better have a strong Ajna and a strong basic. So they move and they can, foresee, not just foresee and sit down, <laughs> right? All right, and uh, if you want a manager, you don't want someone who will only foresee, you want someone to go through, see who's coming on time, check all the quality of all the products, make sure everything is proper, look at the details, that requires throat. Okay, this is extremely complex, so we won't go into too much uh, detail about it, all right? Yep. Can I just add something? Yeah. So I, I think one of the things for me is, uh, sometimes you recognize when you give your staff work to do and they're doing the work, uh, when you are physically present in the office, you realize the same work gets done much faster, right? Uh, whereas if you were traveling or whether, when you were out, uh, you realize they're still stuck and they wait for you to come before they can make a decision or before they can contact you because uh, they are not able to see sometimes the bigger picture because they work with only this slice of the work, right? But the person who's in charge, the CEO, or the person in charge of the department can see the whole thing. And so it becomes easier for them to give them instructions uh, in the direction in which this department has to go and, or in direction in which the business has to go. And that is really important because sometimes when the Agni Chakra is not there, you realize sometimes things just uh, don't stop, but slow down considerably. So the Agni is very important for things to move, including your body. Okay. Now, uh, when I say directing center, I don't mean only emotionally. It might look like that. It directs your emotions. Yes. It's in control of your emotions. If you scan the Agnya per, uh, of a person who's getting drunk, okay, the Agnya becomes smaller, 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 smaller. <laughs> All right. And um, this is a public session. No? Okay. I'll skip. Okay, so it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So they have less hold over what they're going to say and how they act and everything, what they're going to say throughout, how they're going to act, what they're going to do uh, with certain people. So all these, they have less control over. And they're very impressionable because since it's smaller and weaker, certain elementals or thought forms can affect them and the way they think during that amount of time. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, I actually asked a, a young man a uh, long time ago, I asked them, I said, when you're drunk, don't you know what you're saying and doing? They said, yes, but uh, like he said, there's no control. We know we're saying it and it just comes out and you can't stop yourself from saying it. So uh, I, I think uh, for me, it was interesting because I've, I've never done it, but uh, to understand that something like that can actually happen to someone who otherwise is very much in control of what he or she says uh, to whom and how much to say. Yeah. And then it also directs the energies in the body. It makes sure that uh, the proportion of energies all over the body is extremely um, balanced. balanced and uh, the flow of energy is extremely balanced. So it's like an executive. You know, the executive makes sure that everything is taking, uh, you know, is, is, is f functional in the company. Uh, everything is handled. People are happy. If someone's not happy, he goes down there, talks to them, takes them out for dinner. Of course, the Agni, I'm just giving an analogy, uh, but this is what the directing center does, all right? Um, that's why it's very important center. 
just to give you an idea, uh, if you have the chakra called solar plexus, that's not mentioned in this book, but it's at the a hollow point between in your ribs, solar plexus area. If the solar plexus man functions, if the Ming Min chakra man functions, and if your basic chakra malfunctions, it can either manifest as a violent tendency. All right. So if you see people who are very prone to violent, uh, um, their basic, their Ming Min and solar are pretty much overactivated a lot of the time. They get very violent, you know. So, so if you want to know, someone's going to get, uh, be, if someone's going to beat you up, you scan, you scan the, and they run away. Okay. Now, but I, oh, it could also manifest as hypertension or certain uh, ailments with that regard. But if the 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 agnia, which is the directing center, malfunctions along with the solar plexus, main main and basic, and say the heart, which is supposed to transmute the emotional energy and this grosser energy also malfunctions, you will have abnormal growth rate of cells in the body, anywhere in the body. It will start developing uh, abnormal growth rate of cells. So the functioning of the agnia and function of the uh, yes. heart, heart is very important. Yeah, I mean, at the most they get violent, but as long as the heart and uh, agnia are there, you're, you're okay. The moment that, and then that's why if you look at people who have cancer, you, their, their agnia is really, really small, right? It's quite small. They have like a triangular shape or pyramid, pyramid or triangular shape. Okay, I can talk more and more and more about this, but we need to move on. Okay, because anyway, now what is a spiritual function? Spiritual function, this is what someone asked me, how do you uh, control your emotions and thought? By developing the ajna, by developing, you remember I was talking about the abyss and the, the crown, the forehead and the, the agnya are connected to the higher soul. And they're also the entry points of divine energy in the body. Divine energy can enter through your crown, divine energy can enter through your forehead, divine energy can enter through your agna. Please never use the agnya and forehead to project divine energy. It's extremely, it's very different energy and you might not be able to do it, but even if you do it, it might harm the patient if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so just use the crown. Uh, now, because these are entry points of divine energy, everyone who's done psychotherapy here knows the effect of divine energy on the body, all right? And on the emotions and the thoughts and everything. So this Agnya, what do you mean by the higher nature controls the lower nature? These three chakras are your higher nature. The Agnya is your higher nature. So supposing your Agnya is really strong and it is developed, all right? And how do you develop it? Through meditation, through work, through yoga techniques, through arhatic practice, through even meditation on twin hearts to a certain extent. Okay, these, um, through even, um, through even um, super brain yoga, all right? Super brain yoga. By the way, before we go into that, just going into emotion, I remember two things. Um, I wrote it here, I think. Uh, Sumi was talking about her, uh, when she was a little emotional, Master Chua touched the Agnya. When Master would see uh, kids, if you scan kids, their basic is very big, their Agnya is very small. It is the reverse of intelligent people. <laughs> you know, I was telling you people who are talking blah, 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 but do nothing. Their Agnya is very big. Their basic is small. The kids is opposite. The basic is big, Agnya is small. What happens in that? They run all over the place, but they don't know what they're doing. No focus. No focus. They, they go here, then they go there. Then you go there, then they go there. And then they annoy you. And you're like, what do you want? Can you just sit in one place? No. <laughs> so they like, you know, a pinball. And if you know what that is, um, so it, they, they're all over the place and they have no focus or no direction. So if you scan the Agnya, it's very small. So when Master would meet all these kids, he would actually take someone's hand or he himself would just take his thumb and he would just press the Agnya and then it would become really, really big. And then they would stay focused. All right. So, so that is, uh, that is the effect on, uh, on kids. Number two, the Agnya in the throat. Uh, respond to, remember I told you that since it changes emotionally, the Agni and the throat both respond to emotional energy. All right, how do we know this? Because we did an experiment uh, with Master Chua where we were scanning people and we were, Master Chua would be like, ah, you're a, he you're a healer. He would compliment them. He would say, oh, you know, you're really a fantastic healer. So we would think the heart would become big, right? So he says, you're a fantastic healer. You know how long it takes to heal? It takes a long, my God, it takes one hour. How many patients do? Five patients. Wow, you're really dedicated with your service and you're really dedicated to helping people. Very good, very good. What happened was the agnya became big, the throat became very big. All right, so this, uh, so the agnya and throat respond to emotional energy, positive and negative emotional energy. Okay, that is why many psychologists say you have to be very careful with the kids. If you keep shouting at them, criticizing them, giving them negative emotional energy, they actually start to become 
less bright or their thinking process starts to get affected. That's why when you shout at someone, they start to get stressed. They can't think properly because the agni and the throat both shrink. So they cannot think in detail. They cannot see the uh, uh, solution. Okay. So at that time, you have to calm your mind. Um, am I talking too much? It's not. <laughs> okay, there's more that I've written. Well, okay, the Ajna responds to recognizing your true nature. So when you do the, uh, uh, when you recognize yourself not as the body, as the soul, as a being of light, love, and power, since it is connected to the higher soul, the Ajna uh, becomes really quite strong. Okay, and that is why saying the I, what we call in pranic healing, the I am affirmation, saying that regularly can actually manage your emotions and thoughts because it will activate and energize the uh, directing center, which will control your whole body. And that is why the higher nature controls the lower nature. When your agni is strong, you're saying the I am, you're, you affirm that you are the soul. So basically your agni controls what you say, controls who you love, because sometimes that can be a big source of problem. <laughs> you have to think clearly before you love someone because you have to see what baggage do you have? Am I willing to accept this baggage or is it overweight? <laughs> How much weight can I handle? Yeah, can you pay for the excess together. baggage? <laughs> it's one, what are you paying one package with all of it. Yeah, so you have to wait and see. But that requires you to be able to look through matters, all right? So if you have a strong agnya, higher nature, controlling lower ones, higher nature, agnya, Controlling the what you say to people. So you are a nice person. Okay, you don't shout at people. Controlling who you love. Controlling your, your, uh, your will. Okay, controlling your, basically, controlling your purpose or what you like and what you don't like. What is the solar soul again? Lower will. Lower will, yeah. So controlling that. Co controlling your food. Judgment. Controlling who you have sex with and controlling your sex energy. Controlling your uh, action. And making sure you don't beat up people or making sure that your actions are productive and not useless. Um, so those kind of things. Solar plexus could be a whole buffet from watching TV the whole day to just lazing around being a vagabond. So the Agnya will control that like move. <laughs> All right, move. All right, so that is the Agnya Chakra. All right, so the higher nature, once this is developed and this developing, the secret is in, uh, for us is in a technique called Arati Yoga. And that is why many of the spiritual school uh, do um, what we call the, in our school the meditation the blue pearl but they do call it different names they call it Raja Yoga and this this technique of Raja Yoga has been used by holy masters to develop maybe hundreds or thousands of disciples over the past thousands of years okay it is the go-to approach in developing people spiritually okay there's a course called Achieving Oneness with the Higher Soul so this develops the Agnya very very powerfully in a way no that's a, that, there's no such word but in a very productive manner. Powerful way. Is Powerful right. way. Okay, now, the astral properties of the throat and ajna. Look, um, I um, skipped the part where, when you were talking about the uh, astral part of the hearing and the, the, the seeing. So you have to listen very carefully, okay? Because this is a little bit different of an explanation. Your soul, like we said in the earlier chapter, generates feeling through what we call the emotional body. You remember that? I think that's the first or second chapter we spoke to you about it, right? Uh, your soul generates feeling through the emotional body, all right? And your emotional body, just like your physical body, has also energy centers. Now we know from this book, all right? When you look, you look through your eyes, obviously, all right? When you feel, you feel through what part of your body? Your skin. And where is the skin? It's all over your body. So compared to looking and, feel, and hearing and all the other senses, uh, the, sense of skin, the sense of feeling is one of the most developed in our body. Okay. Now, what is in charge of the skin? Uh, if you know pranic healing, it would be the basic chakra. And the quality of the basic chakra is affected by the ajna. All right. Uh, now, different chakras correspond to different senses. So what happens is the astral energy or astral particles passes through these different energy centers. All right. For example, when these astral, uh, when these astral particles passes through the ajna, all right, when they are passing through the ajna, uh, they are also connected with your astral particles all over your body. True or not true? Because they don't detach. You have to. You have to remember that energy is fluidic. 
like electricity. It can be, uh, you know, you can have a substation away from here and the electricity is flowing and fluidic all the way till here, the socket here. But this energy is connected to that. It's one with that. Okay. So these astral particles, when they pass through our ajna, they're connected to the astral particles all over your body. It, it, the ajna, if you remember according to this book, is the center for seeing. All right. So these astral particles all over your body has the ability to see. So it uses your ajna as a projection and the whole astral body can see. So you're not able to see only through the ajna. You're able to see through you're able to see through the whole body. In other words, you can see through the front, you can see through the sides, you can see through the back, you can see through the top, and you can see through the bottom. All right, do you understand? So the sense of seeing is not localized, it's generalized. Okay, so in Indonesia, there's a certain school, uh, energy school, they teach blind people to see, not with their eyes, but with their feeling. So what is the principle behind it? These astral particles, these energy particles pass through a certain chakra. In return, they enable the whole body to see. Okay, but in their case, they practice, their specialization is with their hands only. So they see with their hands. So it's amazing. You see them, you, they write something on the, you write something on the board. They just do like this. They just do like this. They're blind, huh? And they can read with their hands. <laughs> okay, so... Um, why are they able to read with their hands? Because this particle passes through the chakra all over, but in, the, in their case, they train the energy part of their hands to see. Okay? That's why you have the, uh, I think the white tara or certain Buddhist paintings with the eyes on the hands, eyes on the legs, eyes everywhere. Have you noticed that? This is a secret, by the way. You will not read this very easily. <laughs> okay? Maybe that's why it's not being recorded, no? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anyway, because what is written in the book is very complicated. What I'm telling you is making it very easy. That's why when Master was observing people who are blind and reading Braille, actually, it is the etheric particles from the fingertips go through the ajna and they can somehow see. They, can, they know what they're reading. Anyway, same with hearing with the throat. Hearing, they pass through certain chakras in the astral body, certain chakras, uh, and you see... Okay, you hear, if it passes through the ajna and the throat, you can see, you can hear with every particle of your body, even with your eyes closed. Okay, this is interesting, but not very useful to be honest. It's just for your education so that you can be considered a little bit learned. Okay, now, which chakras are used to see and to hear and all of that? Master has told us, the book has told us here, and uh, Master Chokokshri has told us in the book, in... Um, um, what does he say? Sense of smell control energized by the crown, forehead, and ajna. It also control energized by the nostril minor chakras. The sense of taste controlled by the crown, forehead, uh, chakras also control energized by the throat and the jaw minor. The sense of touch is controlled by energized by the crown, forehead, and basic. It's there. The source chakras are there. If you want to, for those who can see. <laughs> anyway, I hope I did not. Uh, make you a disciple of Confucius. Um, but basically, that's it. I think with this, we conclude the Agnya. Yeah, I think we have only five minutes, so better just get into the question. Yeah. I hope it was interesting for you, so you understand how the, the astral particles work. By the way, this is one of the secrets behind the principle of uh, telepathy. All right, so did you look through most of the questions? No, I didn't. Uh, Okay, tough language, okay. Uh, you look really beautiful uh, today, Sumi. I think it's the red lips. <laughs> it's actually pink. It's pink. I've been, I've been in meetings from the morning. I haven't had a break. Even my lips Maybe are half an hour And then came straight into the But it's real, it's not pink. It's not being recorded, right? This one. It ask. is. What? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. okay, let's just go to the next question. That's not relevant. Come on. Uh, registration is not required for this uh, session. Yes, uh, at this point, we don't have registration, but World Pranic Healing uh, will be uh, requesting all sessions, all nurturing sessions to go on to the CRM. So for now, we'll continue with this. At the point when it becomes uh, a requirement, we'll let you know. Uh, hopefully, most of you are already on the CRM, so it should be very easy for you to just get into uh, this part as well, yeah? Okay. Just to follow protocol for all of okay. us. Are there any other ways to control your mental body? Already answered. Uh, press on. 
pressing on the center of your eyebrows medically stimulates the vagus nerve, which controls the sympathetic drive. Very interesting. So again, the nervous system corresponds to emotions. Remember, it's the one that comes from the astral body. Oops. Oh. <laughs> I know electricity. We have it downstairs, but not upstairs. Yeah. So that thing I thought you were. Yeah, we have a battery pack. So I don't know why it's so, so, anyway. so um, maybe that is the significance and real meaning or the purpose of putting a tikka on the head um, when the Hindus do or a bindi. Definitely. Uh, actually, the original bindi is made of kumkum, which is from a tree I heard. All right. Uh, and uh, it has light whitish red prana. So when you put it there, you have to understand the, 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 the woman in the house is like a CEO. She has to handle the stocks. She has to handle logistics. She has to handle the cooking in the old days. Sometimes the families are very big. So she has to handle the budget and she has to handle the timing Child. of the food and the children and, and everything. Yeah. All that requires a very big ajna. So to assist, you have the bindi. But now, of course, it's made of plastic and they have all sorts of colors. So. Um, it's also, <laughs> uh, from what I also understand, the kumkum is not just made at home. Uh, you actually go to the temple. It's also blessed at the temple and brought. So it's not just the material. It's also the energy component that's added to the physical uh, to then place it on her agnya so she doesn't get emotional and upset, but is able to then uh, bring everything together and handle the whole house. Yeah. Doesn't get overwhelmed with the emotions. Yeah. There's a lot more, but we had to, we barely finished. So forehead and clairvoyance. Uh, so we can inhibit someone's forehead or agnya. Okay, I covered that. Drunk people talk a lot of philosophy and make us feel whatever they seem to be true. In many films, they make a person drink as much to tell hidden things. It depends. It depends what chakra is in control. If they are more throat oriented, they will talk about their secrets. If they are more basic oriented, they become violent. If they're more heart oriented, they'll start hugging you and kissing you. Oh, <laughs> you know, they'll start doing. They become extremely affectionate. Affectionate. Yeah. So it depends. And if they're sex chakra oriented, then you'll know. Then uh. you'll be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. It depends on what. You, yeah. You know, the biggest cup gets filled first. That's true. All right. Uh, Helen Keller is extremely Agnya. Yeah, it has the recording stopped. Yes, unfortunately, this recording will not be available. Because of uh, no, 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 We're, they're going to work around it because there's some glitch that's happening. So, what is the difference between astral and etheric seeing? I explained that already. You see, with a combination of both, by the way, more than that, I cannot talk about. Uh, very, very interesting. It's just anyway, it's not useful, it's just good knowledge. You have enough. So, when we do Trinad Chakra healing next day, we're doing in a world. Ajna and, and spleen chakra differences in functioning, please. Well, it's completely different. I already explained the spleen chakra. So if you can go to that video and look at that long, long talk on the spleen chakra. Yeah. All right. So uh, does the Ajna help us to be willful in the astral world too? You have to understand uh, the astral um, component of the Ajna is not only will. Will is divine to many aspects. You're talking about strategic thinking. You're talking about um, um, higher mental faculty. It's not only one aspect, okay? The Ajna is more connected to the mental, not to the emotional. The astral functioning, if you look at the book correctly, is uh, seeing. And I already explained how that works, right? Means during dreams. No, I'm talking about in real life. Like if I was sitting here, someone walks up to me behind, i will be able to see them. Anyway, okay, with reference to doing twin hearts chakral healing after you've done uh, the meditation that you're referring to, um, Ekta is not a problem. I mean, I'm talking about your personal practice, yeah? Okay, shall we end? Let's end for this. Uh, have you finished the other questions? Yeah. Then? yeah, I would love to answer some of this, but we are covering this is the book study we're covering, <laughs> so you're trying to get at least 10 more books out of it, you're getting some more, but. <laughs> More than that would be like book studies. <laughs> yeah, we are trying to do book studies only with GMC cases. Many books of GMC cases, but not other books. Yeah. All right. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone, for being with us. We'll see you again on Friday, right? Yeah. Today is Wednesday. Okay. I, I get lost with all the meetings I have. Sometimes I'm not sure which day I am. 
Um, so can we just close our eyes, connect down to our palate, to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chua, Lord Maha Guruji Meili, to all the great teachers and beings of theosophy, of all the great beings of knowledge, wisdom, and power. Thank you for all the priceless teachings being imparted to us today. We ask you to help us to be open and receptive as these teachings continue to come to us, to make it part of our lives and use it to become better divine instruments. Let thy will be done, not the urges of our lower nature. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Namaste. Atma Namaste. Enjoy your evening. I hope you have, I can see most of you have electricity except us here. We do have, but it's not. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Take care. We'll see you uh, on Friday, 6.30. We'll finish a little earlier so you can catch up with Sri Ram's session as well. Thank you. Bye-bye.